Right, so my, my name is Daniel. Uh, I'm going to talk about um, a data science project at eLife. Uh, so who or what, what is eLife actually? So uh, eLife is uh, um, fortunate to be funded by these uh, four funders and mainly to drive reform in, in research communication in, in various space. So we started with the uh, journal and then now more and more heavily <coughs> invest in open source technology. And there's a, a quote from uh, uh, actually our old office just to kind of emphasize this is really for, for scientists and also that there, there was already the need to, to have a platform. And, I just skip over these. So, uh, just to bring the the project in, into context, so I, I thought like um, maybe use like uh, three actors. So one is uh, Amy, the author. So Amy is um, wants to submit a manuscript. She maybe submitted to another journal before and got rejected. So now she needs to submit again, and she doesn't really like filling in lots of forms. So in that case, Science Beam can help to convert. The, the document, which already has the information, to semantic inform, uh, uh, information and pre-fill the form. And it could also, science being could also maybe extract like the whole like document maybe to, uh, in, in the end to, um, to make it more accessible. So because PDF wouldn't be as accessible. He will, on, on the other end, is a reviewing editor. He got uh, assigned to manuscript and um, he now needs to find uh, um, a reviewer. And uh, there are lots of reviewers. You might have early career researchers that we want to uh, 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 encourage. And he, so rather than just like uh, choosing one of like his, uh, the, the people that he immediately knows, he can use Peer Scout to help him find reviewers that are suitable for the manuscript. And uh, finally, Philip, uh, the reader, wants, uh, wants to stop off uh, on top, um, wants to be on top of his field. So to, to help him uh, with that, um, because there's lots of uh, manuscripts that are published and in the model where we maybe want to also publish any manuscript but with the reviews, uh, there's uh, peer tags where we uh, looked into like making reviews uh, structure, where they find, find some structure in, in reviews themselves. And uh, also uh, um, citation sentiment is to, to look into um, what the sentiment in Citations. Uh, so I will mainly talk about the first project, Science Beam, and then just uh, basically just um, mention the others. Uh, so the, the general idea of uh, Science Beam was um, just to convert uh, a PDF document, which in this case is a typeset ma uh, manuscript, but uh, it could be the author ma uh, submitted manuscript, convert it to semantic XML. Uh, so how hard can that actually be? Uh, turns out to be a bit more difficult. Uh, so the first thing that we looked at was uh, computer vision. So the general idea is that if you look at this picture, you probably can't read the text, uh, but you might be able to, uh, to work out like where's the title, where's the abstract and, and the other elements. So the idea is like if, if humans can do that, then uh, a machine should be able to, to learn that as well. And to do that, uh, we first need to generate the, the right training data so, um, so we, we already have uh, like we have PDF documents and we have the JUTS XML. So we, we basically you, you can imagine like uh, the JUTS XML tells it uh, what the title is. So we have to find the title then th that uh, it's in the XML in the PDF document, and then we can mark up the area where the title is and do that with <coughs> all of the elements so that we have like a picture sim similar to to the one on the right side. And then we can train uh, a machine learning algorithm on, on that. And then on an unseen document, it could predict basically what, uh, what looks like the title. And then we can use that. And uh, that, that, uh, uh, that's, for example, an example of, uh, of an output. So you can see that actually uh, it seems quite promising. I mean, that was on, on a small corpus. Uh, it, uh, it's, it's not perfect, but it also did actually do some, some things better than uh, then the auto annotation did, um, so we wanted to maybe uh, work on it later as well. So with Science Beam, the, the general idea was to combine the tools where, where they're best, so use, use the existing tools that are already out there. So for example, Growbit and Sermine are, are some of them, and then maybe where, where it seems uh, worthwhile to, to also maybe add things like computer vision to, to make it even better. So first we needed to know like, well, well how, how do these tools actually perform? So, so we focused quite, quite a bit of uh, 
energy on uh, evaluating them. So the, the, these evaluations are mainly based on how uh, Grobit evaluates it, but it can be independently done on uh, other uh, extractions. And you can see here that actually Grobit is, for example, on, on the tidal extraction behind all, these, all of these other three tools. And that, that may not be so surprising because uh, Surmine and Science Pass are mainly trained on PubMed Central, where, where Scrollbit is not so much. And the picture looks a bit different on actually uh, um, Corpus from, from PKP. Uh, their group is slightly ahead maybe on, on some of the extractions, so which also shows that, um, th that the data set is really important. So like a tool might perform well on one data set, but not, not so much on another. And we also did something similar on, on Erudit's data sets, and yeah, some, some were really poor on, on these. So, um, so we then looked into training Grobit. Uh, and so the general training data generation looks like uh, you give it the PDF, and then it will use this, its existing models to, to generate some training data. So uh, one of them is the TI XML, which is, which is not like the JETS or, or like the TI describing the whole document. It's like specific to, to Grobit in that case. And, uh, but, but this process doesn't use the XML, so the, the expectation is that a user then goes in and looks, looks at the TI XML and fixes the annotations. So we thought, like, well, we already have the XML, so, so similar to, to like the approach for the computer vision, we, we find the text and basically fix the, the annotations in the TA using the XML that we, that we already have. And, um, and then we, we well, the, the, uh, so then we train the, the model. So in this case, uh, Patrice um, already started so, something using deep learning, which he called um, Delft, so which, which works together with, uh, with Grobit. And, um, one thing that we changed was, uh, so the original model didn't actually use the layout token, so, so it's, it's basically just used, it, um, just used the text from, from the PDF. And uh, the layout tokens kind of give it a bit of context, like uh, where it's positioned, whether it's a new paragraph. And so it helps, helps it. and the traditional model was using it, and so to, to that not put it at a disadvantage, we, we added these uh, features as well. Uh, and then he can run it, uh, basically how he could run uh, Grobit now. And uh, the results are quite quite promising. So so here we got from 0 0.9 on, on our eLife corpus to uh, 0 0.95. And uh, also added uh, some, some documents from Hindavi uh, just to test whether that would uh, improve the performance. And, and it did uh, slightly more, which kind of shows like probably if we add even more data, we'll probably get uh, get better. And because like this maybe looks like it was just like uh, three steps actually, but like, we, we run the evaluation uh, many times. So uh, Apache Airflow helps us to, to kind of manage that. Uh, and this is uh, an example of like, so we deploy Science Beam, which includes Grobit and run the conversion and delete it all, all of this. And here's uh, Juan speaking about um, the semantic extraction group that we, uh, formed together with uh, PKP, Rudit and Cielo. Uh, and here's me talking about the extraction group. And maybe if someone could take a picture for the next one. Yeah. <laughs> I know my moderator when I see one. Some of the technologies uh, involved. So Patrice images had to stand in for Grobit. Uh, you're missing one. Uh, and so, so what were some lessons we learned? So, like, uh, so if you just look at the performance initially, then uh, like we would maybe choose Sermine, but Sermine is actually not actively like developed and has, doesn't have the community that Grobit has. So the, the community is really uh, important there. Uh, and uh, also maybe that's more more technical. So I also tr uh, initially used Airflow to to do the training. Which kind of was quite a quite slow process. So basically, I then reverted to just using Airflow for conversion and evaluation, and um, Jupyter morphed to to manage the training. Uh, and I think the other ones I already mentioned. So the next step would be basically to train on more uh, data sources. Uh, for example, BioArchive seems to be a good source, uh, and improve other. I mean, so so we focus mainly at the 
header information, but it would be the same process for, for other elements. Okay, so uh, I should, uh, oh, I still have time. Um, the, the next project is um, Peer Scout. Uh, so I already talked like uh, Science Beam kind of um, is meant to help at the submission stage. Uh, so Peer Scout then was meant to help uh, to, to find peer reviewers, and we also then extended it. So that were, uh, was initially designed to find uh, uh, reviewers, but then it was extended to also find editors because we also have a growing pool, and uh, some other journals have um, like uh, have a lot more editors. Um, uh, and this is like a simplified process, and uh, I include like a link uh, there because um, also Plan U was mentioned yesterday. So I mean, there are thoughts of kind of t turning that uh, around as well. And that was uh, fr from the initial uh, version. So you would have like um, some some chart, uh, network chart, uh, which kind of gives gives you some connections and and the results. Um, I, I need unfortunately to blur out some some details. <laughs> Uh, but uh, so uh, one, one thing uh, here, so, so it uh, gives everyone a score, so it doesn't make a decision for you, it just uh, kind of helps you kind of, uh, it looks for basically experts for, for the manuscript and scores them on based, based on like other manuscripts that they maybe author that are kind of similar and, um, uh, and then gives uh, and the scores based on that. It also provides some extra information uh, that uh, is important for the editorial team because we don't want to overload uh, reviewers. So someone who already handles 10, 10 manuscripts still can't really do more. Uh, and the other thing is that uh, the second one is actually an early career researcher because we want to promote them. Actually, every other result is, is an early career researcher, even, even though the, um, the score might be a bit lower. So because there was also one of the problems that uh, editors don't actually know all of the early career researchers. Uh, so one thing we learned out of this is to work more closely with the editors. So, so in, for this project, uh, I mainly was working with the um, editorial team, but we also need to get the editors buy-in uh, and also like more technically to, to integrate it more. It was kind of like a separate tool. Um, and while well, Libro is still in process, so in, in the end it will be included in there. Right, and um, so peer tax was a project recently done by, um, by Alessio. Uh, so the general idea is like uh, some, some of the peer reviews might be quite long, like, like this one, and then you could um, see like, so if, if you publish manuscripts and then publish them with their reviews that may then, um, so, so then maybe you're not so, so worried about like if, if there's some text changes in the reviews, but, uh, but someone who might uh, uh, has serious concern might, might, uh, uh, might be different for like if, if you want to leak uh, read the review. So, so the idea is can we find some structure in, in those reviews so, and, uh, <coughs> and hopefully automatically. So unless he was looking at uh, some clustering of, uh, of the text, so, so we split it into sentences. And uh, these are the six um, categories that, that he found. So something talking about figures uh, uh, or stats, uh, impact, um, text, literature, and main discussion. Uh, th these are something that maybe didn't, th that was on our corpus. So he found like it was slightly different on, uh, on a different corpus. Uh, and we also actually went through um, and asked uh, some people to, to, to manually annotate some of the sentences and uh, they, they didn't always like match exactly the models which uh, also the, the, the annotations between people, we, we basically asked two people to, to annotate the same sentence, they didn't always match and just uh, this kind of a graph of the, of the clustering. Uh, so just to summarize, so, so we looked at the uh, at the simple model for that, um, so which seemed seemed to work. And but, but the next thing would be to to get more use more training data uh, for that, and uh, also maybe review the the categories a bit more. Okay, finally um, citations. Uh, so you, you may have seen like some something similar, like a network graph, and and then you look at the big blobs and think, well, that, that must be an important uh, manuscript. 
Uh, and then if you look maybe at some details, uh, then maybe not all of these citations are actually the same. So for example, some, some of them are maybe more criticizing some, some, of, uh, some of the previous work, others are like, uh, more positive. Uh, and scientists are generally quite subtle in their language. So it's like general like um, models trained on, on Twitter don't, don't usually work to, to pick that out. Uh, and then what, when we actually then just look at the citation count, that might not actually uh, give you the true picture of um, how, well, how, how important uh, something is. So that's, that's why we think actually looking at, um, at the citation mix uh, is, is quite important. Um, yeah, so in, in the interest of time, I couldn't include too much. Um, oh, you've got plenty of time. Yeah, yeah uh, I mean, I can, yeah, I can actually um, uh, have some, some spare slides at the end for, for, with more details. Uh, so, so we looked uh, uh, at, at uh, so basically created an initial model, uh, which was then better uh, than the off-the-shelf model. And... Um, but we found like we, we had a bit of problems with, with the data set. So there's one data set which is quite small, which uh, uh, didn't provide us enough uh, really trained data. And, and then we tried to um, uh, look at retractions uh, to ex enlarge that. Um, uh, and so, so one, one of the things to look at later would be maybe to include citations functions. So, so not just the sentiment, but uh, also why was something cited because that, uh, that also gives you good feedback. Okay, to, to put these projects into context again, just um, uh, as a reminder, like, so Science Beam helps at the submission stage uh, at the moment. Uh, Peer Scout helps to find the reviewers uh, for reviewing editors or might help the senior editor to find the reviewing editor depending on the setup. And then we have the other two projects um, uh, that help the reader. In, in the final stage, uh, and uh, some links that um, basically when I sent out the slides, then, then you can read more about it. Okay, I think it doesn't make sense if I go back to, to the others. Okay. Thank you.